How's it going, critter people? I hope you all are doing well. Uh, I was uh, requested to take a look at this video by Canine Optima, uh, Teach Any Dog to Walk on Leash, the different approach than the same old YouTube tutorial, so that sounds awesome. Um, we're using all this under Fair Use Act for education, criticism, uh, you know, just giving my, you know, critique and my own personal point of view and, and opinion on this. Um, so we have a cute little Rottweiler here, um, nice, wide, flat, um, looks like a working collar. Um, it says, does your dog pull on leash? Watch till the end. Okay, so we're going to see this is Canine Optima. So does your dog pull on the leash? Three forms of communication Watch that can till happen. the end. Okay, so he's talking about... Even the sound that comes from that... So the dog seemed to find out a little... You know, he wasn't sure about that. He, he seemed a little stressed. I don't know how old this dog is. Um, he's talking about there's three different types of communication. So that, I would say, would be like a tactile cue. Or no, I guess really, I don't know. Maybe tactile slash you know, auditory... Um, Tactile because he can feel the collar moving, or he and he hears the jingle behind him. Um, I can I can look to jiggle it and let let it do a little playing, especially if you have like rabies tags or dog tags. So that there. I mean that can be something, sure. For me, I probably wouldn't rely on that. I would rather use my voice or use you know the the tension of the leash itself. Um, and and I mean tension, not like a pop, like a quick pop and release. I mean like you know when you're when you're pulling and that leash gets tight that in itself is a cue to uh you know move back to me verbal communication cues coming from me absolutely the most important thing is physical inference the reason that's important is if i teach him to pay attention to my body he's always kind of keeping me in my peripheral and so i'm always going to have a lot of control when i stop he sees me stop he stops when i go he goes with me i mean that's I good there's there's also nothing wrong with just telling the dog you know okay, this is what's going to be happening next, and this and that. I mean, you don't have to control every step of the dog, but it also puts a little less pressure on the dog. If, you know, everybody wants, especially when they're healing, everybody's obsessed with healing. There's a great time and place for healing, but people want the perfect heal, the afoos, the whatever. You know, I'm not into competition, so I don't care. But, and if you are, then that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Just, to, you know, I'm just saying, give the dog a break after a while. Put yourself in the dog's shoes and, and understand that this is a totally... This is a very difficult behavior to teach them and expect them to be perfect is not fair. So he's teaching heal. No problem there. He's going to be using his body as, you know, a, as, hey, pay attention to my body so he doesn't have to uh, rely on his voice. Okay, that's fine too. For me, you know, when, when my Shiba was, uh, you know, a little working man, a little working dog, and he was helping me and, um, you know, I would always just give him a verbal word. You know, I would just tell him, you know, how or left or right or ha or g or you know whatever i mean like same i, I use kind of the the ho or whatnot is a stop you know um kind of combining you know horse terms and um and sled dog terms but i would just use my voice you know that's for me most important and then you know if he got tight you know there's there's times when you know he would uh, I would give him a cue to specifically pull on leash and he was able to help me up um or, or move you know out of certain uh areas or help pull me up a hill or whatnot, you know, um, and then I could also just tell him, you know, ho, and he would, you know, halt and stay and whatnot, but um, that's, that's just me, um, you know, if you just want to do body, I mean, of course, they're, you know, this dog is, is, they're just working on heels, so that's fine, if you just want to use your body, that's fine, I just think you can also make it easier on the dog to not just have to rely on body, but give them a heads up. Turn, he turns with me. But if I don't use a little bit more physical inference and exaggerate my movement in the beginning, he never learns to keep checked in with me. I mean, I can agree with that, uh, you know, to a degree. I don't think you have to be exaggerated. Um, I think, you know, you can pair it with a, you know, in steps where you say right and then you turn right and then, you know, you, you use your exaggerated body, whatever, and the dog turns right, you mark a reward and then so on and so forth. And then you pair it. And when you condition the word right, you say the word first, then you turn right. Then over time, you can just say right, and the dog um, will turn right with you. ...to the ground, and I'm oblivious, unless I say something or unless he feels something. So that's why the visual element is extremely this important. This dog looks so really hot. Your dog walks, you're going to look like He's a birthday panting. the next week. Right? Like I'm, I'm glad that you know they're in the shade. Um, I see that he mentions Tyler Mudo or Tyler Mudo. I'm not a fan of Tyler. I don't think he's a good, you know, trainer in my opinion. Um, I'm just not a fan of his. So, I mean, it doesn't mean that he's a bad trainer or he follows him, but just the, I haven't heard that name in a while. Um, but that makes me a little more iffy about. Like okay, Mudo this guy sounds kind of like, fishy. You look like stealthy ninja. Okay, we're going. Good, and then I'm turning. 
So I don't necessarily like the quick, sharp turns. I mean, this dog, during all this, he hasn't really rewarded the dog for, for anything. You know, not that you necessarily have to, but, I mean, everybody, you know, he's apparently a positive reinforcement trainer, and other than just kind of dragging the dog around with the leash, I mean, I'm not saying that he's he's hurting the dog, but just, I'm not impressed so far. And, and he just need to impress me. You know, I'm not, I'm not anybody fancy at that. He, he cares to impress me. Okay. I'm just saying as a regular owner, as a regular, you know, I just, I don't see anything fancy or special here. Even when I stop, I'll drag my feet. Watch this. So that was more of an auditory cue. And he also stopped because he had the leash tight and shorter. I'm sure if the dog, you know, if this leash were on the ground, he would have just kept on going. Let's go. So for that, that was really beautiful. That was a perfect looking heel. That was gorgeous. I mean, he didn't have eyes up and all that perfect stuff, but that was a really good heel. So I hope he rewards him for that. He even turned. The dog was focusing on him, lost attention. So no reward for that. I mean, you know, this dog is, is you know, people can call Rottweiler stubborn, you know, just like a lot of other breeds. I think they're smart, and they say, you know what, I'm not going to work for free. Everybody needs some kind of incentive, especially if they're learning something that doesn't make any sense to them. They're hot, they're on leash tethered to a stranger, you know, mom and dad's over here, whatever. I'm not saying that you, to be using food or toys or anything like that, uh, that you have to have it right in front of the dog's face and that you can never fade it away. In fact, if you do it properly, you fade away from it very quickly but then you still have some kind of reward for the dog. In the beginning here, heel is a very difficult behavior to teach. So you really want to have a high rate of reinforcement. And that alone, you can quickly move to an intermittent reinforcement. So for every, you know, every two steps that the dog follows you, re mark and reward. Another two steps, mark and reward. Then three or four steps, mark and reward. Two steps, mark and reward. So you, and then, you know, five and 10, whatever. So you went from high rate of reinforcement every two steps, and then you can start to mix it up a little bit. Once the dog has um, proven that they understand the first stage, then you move on to the next stage and so on and so forth. Good. So I don't like that he keeps like baiting the dog, in my opinion. Whatever. Okay, that's just me. I don't care how odd you sound. You make all the noises you want to. But just follow it up with something. You know, make it mean something. Don't just say, yes, that's good and really increase, you know, Really entice them and then, okay, let's turn this way. Let's let's ask more of you. Ask more of you. Ask more of you. That's just my pet peeve. No reward there. It's different than tight heel. So when you're practicing your tight heel, he knows the difference. Notice I didn't Getting say bored, heel. walking away. Heel is a cue that means... Because he doesn't really mean anything now. He's lost all, you know, whatever he may have had. The, the dog is, you know, getting bored, moving over here. Because you're not rewarding him. You're not reinforcing him to want to be around you and therefore he wants to work with you you're on me right this is you're focused on me this is a heel you're staying on my heel loose leash is completely different so you can't say heel you gotta so are they is all this where he wants him by his side still the loose leash is he not even teaching like the, the tight the regular heel which there's a difference for me loose leash used to mean anyways that your dog can go and like be a dog you know it, it's not that they have to be by your side you know and, and now heel is now the competition version of heel where you know you have to the only version of heel with every person is that the dog is focused on you and loose leash is now just lackadaisy in the heel position like i don't know i don't get it it's confusing it's annoying that's why i hate heel i don't really hate it i don't care if you do it with your own pets i don't i don't care you know i of course will i teach heel to all my you know all the dogs i own yes but I'm not going to use it every time we're going out for a walk. Like, and if you want to do that, that's fine. Like, I, it, you know, don't worry about what I say. There's nothing wrong with teaching heel, but when people only teach it or all these trainers only ever reinforce that, that's just a pet peeve of mine. I say, let's go. And if he starts pulling like crazy, ah, ah, and I just jiggle it. No I don't necessarily like that because I don't know how, I mean, I know that he says that here, but the owner, I know this from experience, they always use a lot more force they pop the dog when you give them an inch they take a mile because it's just instinctive you know instinctual i'm not saying the owner's going to do that but you know i don't like the necessary 
uh-uh, you don't need to even do that. It, you can, but in my opinion, I don't think it's necessary. You teach him to ignore that signal. And, and the dog has to be, if it's pulling like crazy, the dog has to then be loosened somehow, or the leash has to be loosened in order to have that slack to make that jiggle. No discomfort, no pain, no tug. So again, he, he says that, and just like anybody says that, but I, I believe that thing of what you hear and only half of what you see. You know, I'm very critical of everybody, just like anybody can be critical of me. You know, I'm, it's not about me being better or not. I'm trying to make sense to you know, give the dog a voice and make sense to owners and whoever wants to listen to that. Look, any of these, any trainer, whether they're positive or not, for me, I, people say he's positive. I haven't really seen it in this video of him really acting positive. I mean, I'm not saying that he's like a balanced trainer or he's, he's, you know, he's not popping the dog, but I don't know. He hasn't really reinforced this dog for hanging out with him at all. You know, that's just me and the way he talks and the way he mentions Tyler Muto and whatnot. That's just me, okay? So if you like him, then, you know, feel free to watch him. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I, mean, I would rather... my verbal stacks with that tactile... I would rather it. use just the verbal to get the dog's attention to come back or teach the dog when that leash gets tight, that's the cue to slow down. And then you get rewarded either by sniffing, continuing the walk, saying, you know, get a little treat or whatever it is, you know, in the beginning stages. ...coming from the collar, some communicating coming from the collar. Uh -uh. He goes, what was that? Good. So a slack. But what happened? How do you get that slack? I mean, like, I guess, I don't know. I feel like, though, that's going to be more of a negative than a positive. But, I mean, you, know, you could argue the same thing, too. I guess if I teach a dog to give into pressure, it depends. It depends on how you teach it. I mean, I don't know. Slack. I'm not really sure. Let me say this. I'm not sure how I feel about this technique. Good. And we keep going. And I'm literally wanting him to pull. So you go out there when you find uh, moments where he's got a lot of gusto. You were you had a 12-hour shift, and he's raring to get out there and walk with you. So he wants him to pull. So that to me says that's not a, a positive reinforcement philosophy. We don't want them to practice the unwanted behavior. So that I'm saying I call malarkey on his title that he's positive reinforcement. That that's just me. Okay, that you know I could be a total liar, total idiot. I'm just calling malarkey on it your moment to teach him when you say ah, that means slow down and see that he wants to condition the correction word malarkey as soon as the slack comes in the lead go we do some turns so he knows that when you turn you turn with him hmm. and then in about seven i'm not impressed time, you got a loose leash thanks for watching i do appreciate it hope you all enjoyed this to some degree whatever degree um and i will be um for uh chips out there i will be looking into um, some of the videos you sent me about uh, Big Lick, which is a, a horse, it's the horsey side of this, this channel. Um, so we'll be going over some of those videos um, for sure in the future. So thanks for watching. Of course, we always appreciate it. Give your little critters a, a hug or a kiss or an air hug and, a hair and an air kiss. <laughs> Give your little critters some kind of loving. Say how do you do for me. And until next time, stay positive.